Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about telephones like this. The compact telephone as released by the General Post Office, which later became BT, in the 1970s. Now, the compact telephone has a rather interesting history. It started out life in the early 1970s as a phone that was a trial unit. It was a trial idea. And the idea was that the phone was smaller than an ordinary phone, particularly it was smaller this way from front to back, so it could sit on a windowsill, something that um, British telephones at the time didn't do very well. The 706 and 746 types were a bit too wide really to sit on a windowsill comfortably. And so they made these phones smaller. But the compromise for making the phone smaller was they couldn't fit the bells inside. And so the bells were in a separate bell box like this one here. The test phones were never released uh, generally. There were some trial batches made which were put on trial very very locally for certain subscribers. But the main release of the phone came in 1977, the year of the Queen's Silver Jubilee, when this was released. Now this is what is known as the Jubilee phone by many people and as you can see they have a special commemorative dial centre for the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977. There's two examples here, one that's sat on its bell box or one that's lost its bell box at some point in history. You can wire them without the bell box and they will still work. The only thing is they won't ring. But that's ideal if you want maybe a second phone in a bedroom that you can make calls on but one that won't ring and wake you up in the middle of the night. But originally they did have a bell box like the one that this one is sat on top of. They wouldn't normally be sat on it though like this. What you would normally do is the bell box would be hard wired to your BT phone line wherever your phone line came into the house. This is before the days of plug and socket in the UK. So your line would come into the house, your line from BT or the general post office as it was back then. Your line would come into the house, normally through the corner of a window or something like that where they'd drill into the window frame. And then you'd have this box permanently mounted somewhere, generally somewhere maybe low down like on your skirting board or somewhere like that. And then there was a long curly cord that went from the box to the phone. So the phone could be sat on that windowsill that they were designed for. You could also get wall brackets for the phones to sit on, but that's another story. So, these phones generally had a separate bell box. And the Jubilee phones issued in 1977 are easy to spot because they were this very dark midnight blue colour and with the colour changing over the years with the plastics changing with reaction to sunlight some of these phones now look almost black but they're not they're actually a very dark blue colour so that was the first general release of these phones in 1977 but after the Jubilee they were slightly updated and released again this time as the type 776 and we have two of the three colours available of type 776 here one colour that was available was the blue that you see on the left here which is now the rarest colour it seems to try and find you also had this creamy colour that you see on the right, which is actually officially, I believe, called grey. And there was a mid-brown colour as well, which I've not got here. Again, I've got them sat on top of the bell boxes. And they've got the same long curly cord to the bell boxes. But there is a difference between the Jubilee and the 776. And look at the front of the bell box at the bottom. The 776 
has got a little lever to adjust the loudness of the ringer where the Jubilee doesn't have it. That's just one of the differences and that's the reason I'm making this video because I want to show you the differences between the two that I've now found and in the bell box themselves there are some major differences when you come to iron the phones. So let's pause the video here for a second and by the magic of editing when we come back I'll have taken the tops off these bell boxes and you'll be able to see the difference. Welcome back. Here we've now taken the tops off the bell boxes for the two different types of telephones. On the right you will see the earlier Jubilee compact telephone issued in 1977. And on the left you will see the grey um, 776 telephone which was essentially the same as the Jubilee and issued after the Jubilee phones had been relatively successful. Now the interesting part here is the inside of the bell boxes which are completely different. If you take a look at that and take a look at that one you'll see the obvious difference is the Jubilee phone only has connections on one side there whereas the 776 has connections there but it also has some there. The Jubilee phone does not have a ribbon cable running under here. The 776 does have a ribbon cable running under here. And the reason for that ribbon cable is because these connections at this side basically mirror some of the connections at this side. So these connections here mirror some of these but on this one of course there are no connections at the other side. So it's just a case of forgetting about those you would think and wiring those and those. Well it's not as simple as that because the terminal numbers are also different. On the Jubilee phone and this is really difficult to see and I'll, I'll try and zoom in and try and make it so you can see it if I possibly can there are little numbers which you'll see here there's a number one here's a number two here's a number three here's a number four and they relate to these terminals so what we actually have here is terminal one two three four and over the back there five six and seven if you look very carefully you might just be able to make out a number seven on that one there can you see that number seven okay so, this is on the Jubilee phone. So on the Jubilee, looking at it with the bells at the bottom, the bell gongs at the bottom, it goes terminal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in the bell set. Okay. But look over at the 776 and it's different and the giveaway here is up there 
which would normally be terminal 5, there's a number 10, which is upside down. And that's because this is wired to be seen the other way up. It's wired really to be seen that way up. And when you put it that way up, this one is wired, terminal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that's where that number 10 is, you see, and then over on this side, you'll see there's an 11 there, can you see that 11? So that's 11, 12, 13. So, the 776 is numbered differently in the bell set. With the 776, you have it with the bells at the top and count left to right, top to bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. But, with the Jubilee, you have it the other way up and count bottom to top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But if you were to turn this the other way up, then you think, ah, well I count bottom to top, I now count top to bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4. Wrong. Because 1 now starts at that end because you've turned it over. So 1 is there. And if you look very closely you'll see the numbers upside down. Can you see the 1 there where my camera focuses? The 2 there. The 3 there. The 4 there. So we'll turn it the other way up again. To make it easier. So the Jubilee phone, just to confirm, goes to 1, terminal 2, terminal 3, terminal 4, terminal 5, terminal 6, terminal 7. And that's with the bells at the bottom. But the 776 with the bells at the top is different. That goes terminal 1, terminal 2, terminal 3, terminal 4, across to the other side, 5, 6, 7, down to the bottom, 8, 9, 10, and to the bottom at this side, 11, 12, 13. And these terminals are called the bell set terminals or B terminals. So, whereas in a normal phone we refer to the terminals as T1, T2, T3, in the bell sets we refer to them as B1, B2, B3, etc. So, I hope you've now got an understanding of the differences between the bell sets for the 776 and the Jubilee phone. Now the previous video that I did dealt with converting the 776 to work with the modern UK plug and socket system. And it certainly works for the 776, but it doesn't work for the Jubilee. So that is something that we need to cover. Okay, we'll be back in just a moment when we'll be looking at the terminals inside the telephones for the Jubilee phones. OK, here are the two Jubilee phones with the top covers removed. If you want to know how to remove the covers, you do exactly the same on a 776. That screw there, right at the edge, you just take that screw out, that one at the edge there, and then you lift up the top cover from the back, 
and then try and sort of move it forwards like this and you'll find that you have to also bend the bottom of the cover so it goes over the finger stop here to get the top cover off. Be very careful you don't break the covers as you take them off. You might find it easier to undo the screw in the centre of the dial here that might be covered as this one is with a dial centre. If it's covered with a dial centre then you need to put a sucker or a piece of um, tape or something across this dial centre then pull on it and it will pull the dial centre out um, and then you'll see the screw. Take this screw out and the finger wheel the clear finger wheel will then come off and you might be able to get the top on and off easier then. So here's our two Jubilee phones. This one remember is wired to work without a bell set. This one is wired to work with a bell set. So this one has a line cord connected directly into it. This one has a long curly cord connected into it which goes into the bell set and then the line cord is also connected to the bell set. So this one does not have a line cord directly connected, it's connected to the bell set. And it's connected to the bell set by a multi-core cable which actually has seven cores inside it and it's connected as follows at the phone this so from the bell set to the telephone you have a cable that's got a red a blue a white a black an orange and a green core inside the cable and that is this cable on this side here going in this one okay so you can see all the, the colors the, including the colors you don't normally have like the orange there and black there and it should be connected to work with the modern UK system as follows red from this cable should be connected to terminal 4 which is 1 two three four which is there and you can see this red cord is connected to it blue should be connected to terminal one which is here this is terminal one and as you can see it has got a blue wire connected to it white should be connected to terminal five so to one two three four five so this is five and it has got a white one on it here you can see black should be connected to terminal nine so that that's terminal five six seven eight nine is here and you can see it has got a black connected to it orange should be connected to terminal eight and as you can see orange is on eight here and green should be connected to terminal 7 which it is there okay so that's where those should be connected in the telephone now at the bell set end I'll tell you where they go at the bell set end okay you listening carefully for this right red which is connected to T4 in the telephone goes to B1 in the bell set blue which is connected to T1 in the telephone goes to B3 in the bell set white which is connected to T5 in the telephone goes to B7 in the bell set black which is connected to T9 in the telephone goes to B4 in the bell set orange which is connected to T8 in the telephone goes to B5 in the bell set 
and green, which is connected to T7 in the telephone, goes to B6 in the bell set. Okay, you've got that. Brilliant. So that is where they all go. And remember, that is a bell set for a Jubilee phone, i.e. one of these midnight blue ones, not for a 776. This is a Jubilee phone that we're talking about here, which has got the connections all just at one side of the bell set. If the bell set's got connections at both sides, then that's a bell set for a 776 like that, which is different, not a Jubilee like this. So, that is how you connect a Jubilee. If you want to have it with the bell set. Now, if you don't want to have it with the bell set, and this one hasn't got the bell set, the connections are a little bit easier. And they go something like this. Okay. You have a normal line cord now, which is this cord coming in, which would normally have a red, a white, a green and a blue core in it. Now I'm using a different cable here which has got different coloured cores. Um, so my white, what would normally be white, is black on here. <coughs> Excuse me. So white would normally go here to T5 which is exactly the same place that it goes in the one with the bell set. So that black would normally be white, as you can see on that one it is white. Now red, what would normally be red, in this one I've got a yellow cord, but it should be red by rights, and that would normally go up here to T4, which is exactly as it does in the one with a bell set. Okay. Blue would go to T1. Now my blue here happens to be green, but it's going to T1, which is exactly the same as the one with the bell set. As you can see here, blue does go to T1. And green which is actually red on this particular cord, would go to T6. Now this is where it's different, because that goes to T6. On the one that's on the bell set, it goes to T7. If you count the terminals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And on here, it goes to 6. Pretend this red cord is green. Okay? So that's the one that you move, the green one, when you're not using a bell set. I'm not entirely sure why, I've not looked into it why. It may be that you can put it on either one, but I just know that this version works. So I'd say do it the way that I'm saying here, move it over and it should work. Now, you don't move the receiver connections at all in any of these and you don't move the connections for the dial. And I have been asked how you wire in the dials and the receivers um, because a chap called Peter contacted me and said he was putting one of these phones back together and he thought some of the connections had gone astray. So let's go and have a look at a wiring diagram to see where the connections go for the handset and the dial and we can do that best by getting over to the computer and having a look at a proper wiring diagram. Okay here we are at the computer 
and here we have a wiring diagram now this first diagram that I'm going to show you is for a Jubilee or a 776 telephone with the original bell set and the original bell set cord so there's no line cord goes into this phone because the line cord goes into the bell set and then a, there's, a, there's a cord from the bell set that uh, goes into the telephone itself as you can see at the bottom left there that is the bell set cord now remember that in the telephone unlike the bell set it's the same for both a 776 phone and a jubilee telephone so the phones themselves are identical in terms of wiring inside them even though the bell sets are different so this is how you do it for a converted 776 and a jubilee um, with the original cord and when I say converted of course that means that it's been converted to the modern UK plug and socket system so we've already gone over earlier where the cords to the bell set goes but you can see those basically on the left of this picture here so you can see that blue goes to T1, white goes to T5, green to T7, orange to T8, red to T4 and black to T9. But what we haven't gone over yet is where the dial and the handset cords go. Now the dial is a um, dial type 21 but it's a special dial type 21 because it's got a special low resistance clutch if you like in it so the dial will turn easier than on a normal telephone and that is because these little phones are particularly lightweight and if you put a normal dial in them out something like a 746 the phone will be skidding around on the desk every time that you try to turn the dial so they do have a special dial in them but this is how it is wired so from your dial you will find you've got an orange pink grey blue and brown um, wire so the orange goes to T4 the pink goes to what is actually labelled in the phone T2 um, which under normal circumstances if you read it the normal way would be T10 but it's actually labelled in the phone T2 the grey goes to what is labelled in the phone R2 the blue goes to what is labelled in the phone R1 and the brown goes to what is labelled in the phone T1 now I believe the T and R stands for receiver and transmitter and that's why you've got them labelled TR um, but it does throw up some confusion because the normal connections which you see here on the left uh, we normally talk about them as being T1 to T9 as in telephone 1 to telephone 9 so on the left there you've got telephone 1 to telephone 9 connections and on the right you've got receiver 1 and 2 and transmitter 1 and 2 so the dial goes orange to telephone 4 pink to transmitter 2 grey to receiver 2 blue to receiver 1 and brown to transmitter one and then on those four terminals that you've connected there you've also got the handset cord and that's the cord of course that goes to the receiver transmitter whatever you want to call it handset whatever you want to call it as so in that cord you should have a white red green and a blue cable and they go as follows white goes to transmitter 1 red goes to receiver 2 green goes to receiver 1 and blue goes to transmitter 1 so I'll go through that again white to transmitter 2 red to receiver 2 green to receiver 1 
and blue to transmitter one. So that's how you do it for a converted phone with a bell set. But these phones occasionally turn up without a bell set and you can wire one of these phones to work without using a bell set and this is how you do it so if you've not got a bell set if you want to use the phone to make and receive calls and um, you've got a separate bell somewhere and bear in mind you've got to have a separate bell somewhere because you need to know when there's an incoming call and because this phone's got no bells it won't tell you but if you've got a separate phone somewhere that will ring or if you've got a separate bell set that you plug into another socket somewhere that will ring um, then this is the way to wire one of these phones on its own so this time you are putting a line cord into the phone and it's a standard line cord like you would fit to a Tele 706 or 746 etc so it's got a white, a blue, a green and a red um, cable in it and these wires go as follows white goes to telephone 5 blue goes to telephone 1 green goes to telephone 6 and red goes to telephone 4 then at the other end it's exactly the same as it was for the original bell set so on your dial orange goes to telephone 4 pink goes to transmitter 2 grey goes to receiver 2 blue goes to receiver 1 and brown goes to transmitter 1 then the connections to your handset are white to transmitter 2 red to receiver 2 green to receiver 1 and blue to transmitter 1 so on that side on the right hand side there it's exactly the same as it was for the one with the bell set as you can see there and also remember there should be a little link in between telephone terminals 1 and 2 to link them together if you've not got that little link you put a little bit of wire between the two um, the only other thing to tell you is the line cord and bell set cord are basically wired the same it's just that the bell set cord has got more um, wires in it because it's got a black and an orange that aren't there on the um, ordinary line cord as you can see the only difference with the ordinary line cord is where that green one goes can you see that and I'm not entirely sure why that's different I've not looked into it but generally the green isn't used in uh, in modern day phone systems that green core isn't used so I think they are probably just blank terminals and it's just that they've been put onto different ones you know different blank terminals but I think you'll find it would probably be safe to not connect that green up as well if you didn't want to connect it up I think you'd be okay that's the one to the bell set or line cord as you can see there so that is how you wire up a Jubilee telephone I hope that has helped anyone who's trying to do it and as always if you've got any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments section below or you can also get over onto uh, our website uh, if you like and uh, that is here at andyshed.corepress.net and you can uh, send us a message through that as well if you've enjoyed this video and you would like to see some more we also now have a way that you can support us for a small monthly donation via patreon if you'd like to go and take a look at that and consider supporting the show then go to patreon.com forward slash andy shed 
and also remember that uh, we would like you to like and subscribe so hit that little uh, subscribe icon there on YouTube and uh, also the bell icon as well to get the notifications when we put up a new video until next time though from me thanks for watching